Perna, thank you so much for coming on. I've been so excited about this interview because I am obsessed with your company. And I just wanted to say first, thank you for coming on. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here and to talk to you. And thank you for the kind words. Of course. So you own an amazing company. It is called Hooked. And before we get into Hooked, because I have so many questions about your company, but can you just walk us back to what you were doing before starting this company and kind of what led you to becoming an entrepreneur in this space? Yeah, so, well, I've actually been an entrepreneur for 17 years, um, basically my entire career. I started my first company six months out of college uh, in 2005 way back before it was cool to quit your job and, and start a company. <laughs> uh, you know, I still remember when I did that, my friends thought I was completely insane. And um, it, it was, you know, it, it was a different time and a different world back then. And I, you know, the reason I got into entrepreneurship at such an early stage in my career is because I just, you know, I had for six months, I was working, actually went through two jobs in six months. I was, I started by working in a consulting firm and I wasn't happy there in San Francisco. And I, I just was feeling really stifled. I felt my creativity and my, my just joy of learning and curiosity stifled. And so I knew I wanted to make a move into the entrepreneurship world. I ended up jumping into um, a VC job from the consulting job and I got there and felt the same way again, you know, and just realized that the only path for me was to do my own thing, to forge my own path and create my own um, reality, basically. And and that's why I did it, you know, and at having going through two jobs in six months, it was really frowned upon, you know, and it was it was like, oh my gosh, like what is she doing? She's totally ruining her career. Um, but I just really felt like I had no other option. Like this was the path for me. I just knew it in my bones and I, I didn't know anything else. You know, I had an idea for a business and I just jumped in and I went for it. And, you know, fast forward 17 years, um, it's been a wild ride and, um, I've had a lot of failure experience, a ton of failure during that time. I've done three startups. Um, so I'm on my third one and have many, have had many, many ups and downs and many incredible lessons learned. Um, but it's just been the most amazing journey. I love it. And first that takes so much courage because we are so taught that story of like, you have to follow this and then this and then that and work there for a year minimum. So how do you exactly. feel like first you got, you had that kind of self belief where you're like, no, I know I can do this. I don't really. I don't care what anyone thinks. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of it really came from um, just my experiences in childhood. Honestly, I grew up in a small town in Oklahoma, the oldest child of immigrants from India in the 80s and 90s at a time when, um, you know, I mean, there well, there's still a lot of hostility towards immigrants in certain parts of the country, uh, such as Oklahoma. And, you know, especially back then, like it was really not, um, it was tough. It was tough to grow up in that environment. And I think I had to learn early on in my life to really believe in myself and to have the courage to be true to who I am and to not feel like I needed the validation of my peers to follow the path that was right for me. And, you know, I will say, I don't want to just only say negative things about where I grew up. I actually really appreciate those experiences. It made me who I am. It also helped me understand that people who are different from you and don't agree with you, you know, aren't bad people. They're just different. And that there's a lot that you can do to find common ground. And all of those experiences um, helped give me the courage to, to follow my path, which was the path for, of entrepreneurship. Let's start getting into Hooked and this incredible idea. I, I, I can't even imagine the thought process because I, I need to ask you how you got into this whole thought process, but it is so unique and it's very rare that I hear company background where I'm just like, who thought of that? Like I, it is so 
incredibly interesting to me. So how can you walk us through you, you first getting the idea for Hooked? Yeah, well, thank you for describing it that way. The other way to think of it is, it's, 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 say it is, it, this is so weird. Like, who would think no. of such a bizarre <laughs> idea? <laughs> and you would never think it would work. <laughs> um, and which is what people said, <laughs> you know, when we first started. But I'm sure uh, it really actually came about. I mean, you know, I think all of the businesses that I've started came from really a, a personal narrative and, and a personal place, a desire to kind of see something out in the world. Um, it was, the idea came about, I was traveling with my husband. We decided to take, after our last startup, take a break. We left Silicon Valley uh, and just ended up traveling all over the world for a year and a half. And while we were traveling, we started to write a novel for young adults. It's a sci-fi fantasy trilogy set in Silicon Valley in the future. And it, it was basically, it's, it's a novel for teens. And as we were, you know, when you're traveling and people ask, what do you do? And we said, we're writing this book for teens. And we kept hearing this refrain again and again, which was like, what's the point of that? Teens don't read. Reading is dying. And that really kind of made us sad because you know, reading is, and great stories are so fundamental to us as humans. It's especially in your teenage years, that's when you learn about your, the world and your place in it and who you are. And there's so much kind of self-reflection and growth that happens through the amazing books that we read at that age. And so to us, this idea that um, that experience was going to die because of mobile phones and because of social media just felt tragic. And so we decided to come back from our travels and try and solve that problem, basically create a new product that would help engage teens with fiction and help them understand that reading fiction can be just as fun, you know, and in a, in a lot of ways, maybe more fulfilling than spending all your time on Instagram. And that was kind of the genesis of Hooked. But when we started, it was a tall order. We started by doing these tests where we put up, you know, books that you might read in, in, you know, 10th grade, like in, in your English class up on um, a mobile optimized website. And we had data that showed us, okay, if we, if we, we ran some ads on, on Facebook and got teens to, you know, come to this website and we looked at the data to see how much time did they actually spend, like give us, you know, reading this. And it was nothing. I mean, like they really truly were not reading at all. And that was sort of the benchmark was, was okay, this is a really like, this is a terrible user experience right now. How do we make reading a good user experience on a mobile phone? And that was really the very beginning of Hooked. Wow. And I, okay, so the first time I saw it, you you tell stories. Th it was I think on Instagram. You were t the story was being read almost like a text message, and I was like very into it. I'm like I have to, and then it ended. I'm like, oh my god, this is the best name because I'm literally hooked. How <laughs> did so? Did you start? <laughs> did you start then with social media, and then I know you have text, and now you have video, which is amazing. What? Where did you start? Yeah. So we started with exactly what you're describing, which um, now has become known as chat fiction. But basically, the, the sort of key innovation that we had was telling stories in this dialogue driven format, where in the very beginning, it was there were short stories, five minutes each. To, and, the, and the premise was there are these two characters that are texting each other. They can't see each other. They're in different locations and some sort of, um, you know, suspenseful or dramatic thing is happening in one of their lives and they're texting the other person to try and help them through this problem. And um, it, it turned out that when you tell stories in this way, it is incredibly engaging to a very large population. Like it wasn't even just teenagers, you know, people like you and me uh, who started to see these um, chat fiction stories pop up in their feeds got hooked and it ended up being incredibly um, just it, it honestly really surprised us the extent to which this this made people interested in reading um, while they're scrolling their Instagram feeds right yeah I think it's it's so smart and you're capitalizing on just where the industry is going and where users are 
and you have I, I don't know the exact amount but millions of users correct yeah okay. yeah hundreds of millions actually hundreds of <laughs> yeah. millions okay that's incredible <laughs> and while you were in the, the beginning stages of you have this concept and you have this vision what are some tangible things that you did as an entrepreneur to actually launch this what were maybe like your first hires how did you go about actually building this yeah it's a great question at, and it's something you know i've been through it so many times um, you know, this is my third startup, but we've also launched many different apps over the years. And so every time you're working on a new, you have this new idea, you're so excited. You have this grand vision for this thing that you want to build. And it's really easy to feel really overwhelmed and not know where to start. And the most important thing, you know, every time I get an idea for a new product and I, and I you know, I start building, it's really about breaking down your vision into really small chunks and figuring out, you know, what is, what is the first thing that I need to do? <laughs> you know, what is the number one most important thing to get me to step number two and really just taking it a day at a time and going step by step. And so with, with an app, you know, if you're trying to launch an app, obviously the number one thing is getting your engineering team on board having a great engineering team you're not going to be able to build anything without an engineering team i'm very lucky because i have i live with my co-founder my husband he's my cto <laughs> and you know so he um he, you know he has years of experience now recruiting engineers he has a great network he knows what to do and so that part kind of tends to go to him and then on my end it's thinking about the product vision, you know, what is the MVP, the minimum viable product that we need to launch to first get test our idea and see, you know, get it out into the hands of customers and get feedback and see whether this is going to work. And so those are really the two things that we think about. And, you know, it's, it's, I think that's one of the hardest things is when you're first starting out, you want to build everything all at once because you have this, this, these grand ambitions of what you want this product to be but it's really important to remember it's you you don't want to it's important to launch early and get feedback as early as you can so don't don't try and build something that's going to take you 12 to 18 months to build what can you build in three months go build that and launch it and and use the data get data quickly and use that to iterate and that's really how we approach product development I love that advice. And it also builds momentum, I think, because when you don't see short wins, you're like, I at least check out. I'm like, I need to see something to keep me going. Yeah. That's so, such a great point. It, it's so important to get that exactly that feedback for yourself, you know, to keep you excited and keep you motivated. And you learn so much every time you put something out, you learn so much and it makes your product that much better. I love that. So when was the moment where you felt like the consumer kind of caught up with your vision and all of a sudden you're looking at each other like, oh my gosh, we just did this. We just built this company and we have hundreds of millions of people coming on board. When was the moment you feel like you guys really clicked? Yeah, uh, it took a while. I mean, when we, you know, we first started the company in, it was, uh, you know, around January, uh, 2015. And it took us, you know, three months to figure out exactly what we were going to build, that it was going to be this, this thing, this chat fiction thing. And then we spent another three months building a prototype, then another three months doing an official launch. And it wasn't until um, December of that year that things really started to take off. And um, it, it suddenly kind of started to pick up and it went you know, it just sort of built steam and it went viral and we ended up hitting the number one spot uh, in the app store at the end of that year. So it was a full year before we really had any kind of traction. And, uh, and then ultimately then it just kind of happened all of a sudden and it was incredible. <laughs> yeah, no big deal. Also, you make it sound like a year is a long time. A year to be number one on the app store is incredibly <laughs> impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, Something that I love, love, love that you've built is this idea of 
the AI function, which is massively disrupting a huge issue in our world of diversity. Can you kind of touch on that and talk about how that works? Yeah. So, you know, for me, obviously, as a woman of color, some, you know, who is coming into the storytelling industry, the, the book, I mentioned this book that I was writing, it's a sci-fi fantasy trilogy, but the protagonist is an Indian female. And when I first started writing this book, you know, and I started to kind of make some connections in the industry and pitch my idea, it really just fell on deaf ears. And the reason was, if you look at whether it's book publishing or Hollywood, the way they make decisions, the way the people in power make decisions on which things to green light is based on what has succeeded in the past. And if you're always making decisions based on what has succeeded in the past, everything will always look the same. And so right. in sci-fi fantasy, right there today, to date, there still has not been a major sci-fi fantasy, you know, franchise with an Indian female protagonist. And so they just assume it's not going to work, that there's no demand for that. And so my mission always with Hooked was, you know, get get t teens to read. And as we do that, build an, an AI system that starts to um, basically get a signal when a story is working. You know, um, now that we have this big audience, let's show, let's put out, let's let's promote diverse creators, give them a chance. People, writers who have never had a chance, have never had their break, give them a chance, publish their stories to this massive audience and build a data system that allows us to, to prove that there is demand for these diverse stories. And so we've built this AI system that basically will take a story and help find an audience uh, for that story and what we see is that there is incredible demand for stories with diverse characters. Um, you know, we talk about the gender disparity. After all these years, the vast majority of our stories have female protagonists. And what we've, we've run a lot of tests and we've seen that, you know, actually men and women are equally interested in stories with female protagonists and females are actually more interested in stories with female protagonists. So this historical thing that has happened in Hollywood where the vast majority of stories of movies, TV shows have male protagonists, it literally makes no sense. It doesn't actually, you know, have, have, uh, there's no uh, support from that. If you actually look in the data, but they don't do that. And so that's, that's kind of the system that we've built using AI to, to support diverse creators. And it's been a personal mission of mine with this company. That is so, so amazing. So can someone come to you with a story and you're like, I will produce this? Or how does that process work beyond the AI? Yeah, so we work with professional writers and we have a, a team of editors who uh, will, you know, they, they basically take submissions. And the way it works is the way that we're able to kind of support um, writers who have not, you know, maybe they've never had a publishing deal or they, they've never had their script written is we ask them to submit very short stories, five minutes each. And we are able to then publish those stories out to our audience. And because we built these algorithms, you know, with their, their you know, we, we, we will, um, you know, send a few hundred readers initially to the story. And then the algorithm starts to pick up on, okay, this story is resonating with these readers, and then it kind of um, will find other readers. And so that gives us the opportunity to take a chance on new kinds of writers and also different story ideas that, you know, maybe, you know, if you're basing it on what's worked in the past, maybe you would think are, you know, are crazy, but it turns out there's an audience for it. I love this. And it's, it's so true how backwards it is of looking to the past in, in order for us to be informed of our future decisions when we've only exactly. become better, smarter, everything good. So that's really cool. You should sell that data. <laughs> Change Hollywood. So as, as a founder, especially, I know that you're a mom and you're married to your co-founder. How for you do you decompress and just make sure that you have time for yourself and not talking about work and just really feeling, you know, in your power again? 
Yeah, it's really hard. I mean, I think it's hard for all of us in this day and age to to disconnect. You know, it, there's always this expectation to be available and there's so much noise out there on social media all the time. And there's this feeling that you have to know everything. And so I think for me, it's just really trying to um, just create boundaries. You know, it's for me every single day, I try and leave time in the morning and at night where I'm not looking at my phone or at my computer at all. And, you know, I have a meditation practice that I, that I try to keep up with every night. I mean, it doesn't always happen, but, you know, I really try and, and prioritize that. Um, getting outside is really important for me, being in nature, exercising, eating well, and sleeping, getting as much sleep as possible, all of these things and prioritizing them. And the only way you can prioritize all of that is if you say no, you know, and, and, and you don't fill your calendar with all the different opportunities out there. And so it's, it takes a lot of discipline. I think it's actually, it's the hardest thing to do to do, try and do less. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I don't, I definitely don't get it a hundred percent right. There are times where I feel definitely overwhelmed that I said yes to too many things, but really just try and be disciplined about, um, disconnecting and, and building time into my day to, to take care of myself and, um, just, you know, create mental space basically. Oh, mental space. Yes. So important. I love that. Yeah. So you have some very impressive investors there. I know you have Ashton Kutcher's fun and you have quite a few celebrities who have invested in you and have believed in Hooked. Can you walk everyone through kind of that process of how you started and how you were pitching the idea of Hooked from the very beginning? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've been very lucky to, to get some amazing investors you know, and I, I've been fundraising for 17 years for different companies, and it's really hard. Fundraising is really, really hard. It's hard at every stage. You hear no a lot. You, you face constant rejection. But I think what we found with Hooked, I mean, we really hit our stride, you know, and, and it sort of, um, we, 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 we started at some point to just get a lot of positive um feedback from investors. And then one person joined, Ashton was our first celebrity investor, and it kind of just the ball got rolling. And I think what I found was it was a couple of things. One, the personal narrative, you know, I think it, it came from we started this company really from our own personal experience, with the desire to make reading engaging for teens with the desire to help promote diverse creators. And I think that messaging really resonated at a time when everyone in the industry knew that this was a problem. And I think people came on board to help support us to, to help make it happen, basically. So they could also participate in changing that culture. And the other thing was a demo. I think having a killer demo is really helpful. And once we actually built that prototype, this is another reason why it's important to get get something built quickly you know and not wait and not sit on an idea um, but once we have that prototype we would just take it out and show people and it you know that i would just hand uh, a prospective investor the phone and have them tap through a story and nine times out of ten they got hooked and they read the whole story it was just sitting there kind of awkwardly watching them you know, read this <laughs> they're like what's story. next <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and so that was really effective. It's, it's, they in that moment understood why this was going to be big even before we launched it. Yeah, that's really, really cool. I, I, it reminded me of that story with Sarah Blakely and Sphinx where she went and had, I think, one of the investors or one of the buyers, maybe. She's like, you just have to come in the bathroom with me and try them on, which I love. It's like <laughs> you have to feel it and actually see the product. So you are on TikTok. I know you did a, you, you've had an ongoing Snapchat partnership. How have you kind of brokered these deals with these major social media platforms? Yeah, it's, um, it's not easy. You know, I think it's it, generally business development is, is difficult because these, there are these large companies, they have so many um, companies, other smaller startups that want to work with them. 
and they have certain strategic priorities. And what we've seen is that it works best when you're not trying to convince them that it's that that you know a certain strategic area is important. It works best when they've already decided that this is an area we want to invest in and that you're convincing them that we are the best company in this area mm. for you to partner with. And so in the case of Snapchat, that was our first major partnership. They reached out to us actually. And you know, they had heard about Hooked and and seen some of the, uh, you know, uh, stories, I think, you know, in different feeds and whatever. And uh, I was surprised, I was very surprised, actually, that they wanted to put a reading experience in the Discover feed. And they reached out to us and we just started with a little test, which was great because I think it showed it was lightweight. It wasn't a ton of work for us. And it gave them the ability to kind of get data and see whether there was actually a fit and it was the test was very successful and their audience really responded well to hooked content in in the snapchat discover feed and it just the partnership just grew from there and now we have three different channels on snapchat it's been amazing they've been amazing partners and we reach huge audiences there with with our content and that then you know formed the basis of us forming partnerships with other companies as well because that went so well. That's a, such a good point too about business development. And I think something I hear a lot in the Woman Inc. community is I can't put myself in front of people. Like I would rather die than speak in front of a group of people, a group of investors, um, even try to broker deals like this. And it's like the more little successes you have and people coming to you and saying, I believe in this, I want this. You really do build that confidence, I think. I don't think most people are just born thinking they're the most amazing person on the universe. It's it's a muscle yeah. that you build. Exactly. It is totally a muscle. I very much relate to, to what you're saying. That was me, you know, for many, many years. I used to get so nervous when I was pitching investors and it's, it's, it did not come naturally to me at all. And now it feels like it's second nature. It's so easy and it just takes time. And I think it's particularly hard as a woman because nine times out of 10, even today, the people you are pitching are men, whether it's yes. VCs, whether it's business development partners, whatever it is, anywhere you go, you're talking to men and, it's a different culture, you know, as open minded as they may try to be like, you're not going to be the bro, you know, you're not going to be able to like bro it up with them. And, yes, totally. <laughs> and so like, it's hard to build rapport. And it's exactly what you said, you just got to get out there and do it. And you'll start getting those little wins and you'll get confidence and you'll learn your special unique way of talking and pitching and selling and it'll start to work. So, so good. So on that, who inspires you the most to keep going and just keep going after the things that possibly scare you, but you know this person is in your corner or just has done it before? Honestly, it's, it's my husband and my co-founder and my business partner. You know, it's, I think it's, you know, anytime I'm feeling down or feeling like it's impossible and it's not going to work he really picks me up and keeps me motivated and keeps me believing. And I really, I'm just, I feel so lucky to have him. He's such a positive person and he's very even keeled and it, it, it is, you know, he is my rock. Okay. So <laughs> two more questions. The, the first one is what are you most excited about in looking into the future of Hooked? So I'm most excited about taking our top fiction stories and starting to produce them into movies and shows. And we've done this uh, for uh, kind of a, at a smaller scale, you know, with some of our pilots that we've produced. So we've created these short, um, basically pilots or kind of short series, depending on, you know, how you want to think about it on TikTok, a 10 minute uh pilot is, is a full series, <laughs> but, and we've been working with, um, amazing, diverse 
talent that we're finding, acting talent that we're finding. And it's just been really, really cool to start to see these these stories come to life um, on the screen. And so that's that's a really exciting um, next step for us. I love that. I'm so excited just to keep watching everything that you will build. And my last question is, what would be your number one piece of advice to a woman who is either wanting to start her own company or just really go after something that she is passionate about? Yeah, my number one advice is to follow your heart. You know, it's you, you know, deep inside this, this vision that you have, this dream that you have that you want to bring into the world. And it's unique. And you are uniquely qualified to go make that happen. Follow your heart and believe in yourself. And don't worry about what other people will think or what other people are saying or when they're telling you you can't do it. You know deep down in your heart that this is meant to be. And just keep channeling that belief to make it happen. Yes. It is absolutely, I think, the number one thing, too, that you you have to have that. Yeah, it's so powerful. Exactly. Prerna, thank you so, so much. Where can everyone find you and follow along on your, your journey? Yeah, thank you so much to you. This was so wonderful. So I'm on Instagram <laughs> and Twitter. It's just my first name and my last name, Prerna Gupta, uh, on both Instagram and Twitter. And uh, I would love to, to connect with anyone who listened and, and wants to stay in touch. Yes, and download the Hooked app. You'll be literally hooked. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much. <laughs>